So when you were cutting Spider-Man and then you would wanted to get on Captain Marvel, you're, you're obviously aware ahead of time of Captain Marvel, even before you were doing Black Panther. Uh, when you do a Marvel film, you know, you're not just doing that film, you're part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and in a, in a storyline that weaves through all these different films. Yeah. When you're cutting Captain Marvel or Black Panther, are you aware of these other story elements? Are you, you know, beyond what's in the script? Are you thinking about, okay, well... I have to be careful of this because when we get to Avengers Endgame or, or uh -huh. because of something that happened uh, in a previous Marvel film. Yeah, I'm not fully aware of what happens in the other films. They'll suddenly, they'll sometimes like casually start talking about Avengers in front of me and I would freak out because I'm, I'm a fan and I'm like, this is not how I want to find out what happens through you like half-heartedly talking about major plot points and I've literally like reprimanded Kevin Feige for spoilers. So you don't really know what's going to happen because what's important to me is that if you've never seen a Marvel film and you don't know anything about the character, I think it's crucial that the film's work as a standalone film that services both the story and the character. And once that foundation is working, then yes, it's amazing to, to give it texture by the Easter eggs and the references to the other films, and I love that stuff as much as everyone else does. But uh, it's got to add to the film, it can't subtract from it. If it subtracts from it, then it doesn't have a place in the movie. So throughout your answers and throughout our discussion, I think you've given a lot of information about, you know, some good advice on, on how to get into this business. But for somebody that comes up to you that, that's looking to break in, just like you were at the time with, with Dan, what advice would you have for them for like, okay, if you want to be a major motion picture editor, here's, here's where you start and here's how you should approach it. You've got to buy the t-shirts of the movie you want to work on. Buy the t-shirt. Um, but honestly, I think finding people to champion you that's what's been helpful to me, finding mentors that, not necessarily expecting them to, to get your job, but just hearing their, wars of, their, 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 their words of wisdom and hearing their war stories um, is helpful. And, and if you can build you know, a friendship and a mentorship, they can certainly open doors for you. Um, sort of not, being, not taking a no, um, not taking a no personally. You know, if someone says no, you know, it's, it's, it's not about you, just keep fighting through the no. Like, if you feel the movie is your movie, like, fight for it. Um, and just, uh, you know, if, 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 if you're passionate about filmmaking and you surround yourself by positive people who are succeeding at the thing you want to do, I think those doors will open eventually. Well, it's all great advice, and it's been terrific to watch you evolve from somebody looking for advice to being somebody that's now can mentor other people. And I can't thank you enough for all the time you spent with this week and for this presentation today. Ladies and gentlemen, Debbie Berman. Thank you.